They say you should never ask a woman her age, but uh, I'm thinking Mother Earth is needing more than just Avon to help her with her signs of aging. It's a crucial question pertaining to the origins controversy. What is the age of the Earth, and how could we know? We dive into that question in this special edition of Genesis Week. And a welcome to this episode of Genesis Week, the weekly program of creationary commentary on news, views, and events pertaining to the Origins controversy. Remember, if you get lost in cyberspace, just punch in wazulu.com or genesisweek.com and you will find us. I'm your host, PNGB. The age of the Earth is a crucial subject and a question that many, many people have, and rightly so. The models of biblical creation and the theory of evolution hold to vastly different ages of the earth, and indeed the age of the earth will determine whether either model stands or falls. So let us not wade into this subject lightly, because eternity is indeed on the line. First of all, let's contrast the two models. Evolution demands an Earth many hundreds of millions of years old because evolution is alleged to operate at an exceedingly slow rate. The biblical account of creation, on the other hand, indicates an Earth that is quite young, on the order of some 6,000 years old. Now, this is based on the account of creation in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, but also from other texts in the Bible, such as the genealogies of Matthew and Luke in the New Testament, which give us the genealogies from Christ right through to Adam and Eve who were created during creation week. So, making use of the genealogies in the New Testament and the ages of people throughout the scriptures, we get a ballpark on the age of the earth, according to the Bible, roughly 6,000 years or so. Now, when people learn what the Bible says about the age of the earth, generally they get all sorts of questions racing through their mind. Questions like, but what about the dinosaurs? After all, we're told that the dinosaurs are many millions of years old. Well, in this program, we critically examine scientific claims, so let's start asking some questions. How do we know the dinosaurs are millions of years old? I mean, they don't come with some stamp on them with a date. Can we ascertain the age of the Earth? The idea of an old Earth, millions, perhaps billions of years, was first concocted not by geologists, but by a lawyer. Sir Charles Lyell, trying to explain away the evidence left behind by Noah's flood. I go into detail on this matter in my complete creation video series, so for the sake of time I won't get into it today. However, Lyell went around the world looking for evidence to back up his new historical sketch of the Earth. His idea was called uniformitarianism, the idea that only slow, present-day processes carved and shaped the Earth. Now, this was a subtle lawyer's tactic. Not at all scientific because he ruled out the possibility of a past global flood without consideration. He traveled around the globe looking for evidence for long and slow geologic processes, such as the erosion of the Niagara Falls Gorge. Now, he saw the gorge, pulled an estimate out of a hat, and suggested that the gorge was eroding at a mere one foot per year. He claimed that the gorge was 30,000 feet long, therefore the gorge must be 30,000 years old, right? Not so fast. Turns out he just made up that erosion rate. The actual erosion rate was considerably higher, five to seven feet per year. The point I wish to make here, though, is Lyell's uniformitarian ideas have permeated the scientific community, and many evolutionary thinkers believe such rates actually do show the Earth is old. As you can see, however, varying rates gives a varying age of the Earth. So we must take all of this with a grain of salt. With that in mind, is there any way that we can at least get an idea of the age of the Earth? Oh, yes. For example, the human population. In October of 2011, the human population hit an estimated 7 billion people. Now, that sounds like a lot of people, but if you took 7 billion people, gave them each one meter square to stand in, the entire population of planet Earth would fit in a square measuring a mere 84 kilometers in breadth and width. Now, according to the biblical account, the human population suffered a massive bottleneck about 4,500 years ago at the time of Noah's flood, when all but eight people were wiped off the face of the earth. Now, if that is true, then the population growth has been an average of 0.46%, a figure that is conservative when compared to the 2009 CIA World Factbook estimate of 1.092%. However, according to the evolutionary dogma, the human population has been around at least 200,000 years. 
So if we use our conservative growth rate of 0.46%, starting with a population of one couple 200,000 years ago, the present population would have Earth bursting at the seams with 4.138 times 10 to the power of 398 people. That's 4 followed by 398 zeros. I cover this subject in more detail in my Crevo rant number 71, Earth Population and Time. But for the moment, I will simply point out the astonishing contrast between the creation and evolution models and reality. In this case, clear creation is clearly the faith that better fits the facts. But the human race also provides another clock by which we can contrast the models from a genetic perspective. Dr. Jonathan Sanford, co-inventor of the gene gun, was a former evolutionist who, because of his own research in genetics, came to the conclusion that evolution was incorrect and that creation in young Earth was correct. Why? Well, as he documents in his book, Genetic Entropy and the Mystery of the Genome, we humans are suffering a measurable rate of genetic decline. Our DNA is wearing out and being overcome by errors over time. The errors are accumulating so fast that the human race cannot be 200,000 years old. In fact, the deterioration rate is so fast that scientific papers have been inspired with titles like The High Spontaneous Mutation Rate. Is it a health risk? Contamination of the genome by very slightly del deleterious mutations. Why have we not died 100 times over? Crow's article suggested that the human DNA was deteriorating by as much as 1 to 2% per generation. Uh, Brock Lee, author of the Comparative Views on Origins, put together a chart showing the deterioration of the genome at 1 and 2% and how many generations before catastrophic DNA failure. Clearly the best you can get, based on the more conservative figures, is perhaps a few hundred generations. At an average of 30 years per generation, that's still only a few thousand years. A far, far cry from the hundreds of thousands of years of alleged human ancestry. Forget about our hominid ancestors. We also know that Earth's electromagnetic field is weakening. We need this field for life on Earth. Now, while the weakening field is a concern, it's a bigger concern when you start going back in time and experiencing a stronger field. Dr. Thomas Barnes pointed out the Earth's electromagnetic field is weakening at a half-life of about 1,400 years. In other words, 1,400 years ago it was twice as strong as it is now, 2,800 years ago it was four times as strong, 4,200 years ago it was eight times as strong, etc. Going back a mere 25,000 years ago, a drop in the bucket of the evolutionary time scale, the Earth's magnetic field would have approached that of a magnetic star, and life on Earth would be impossible. Again, creation is the faith that seems to fit facts far better than the evolutionary faith. From a geological perspective, we have a massive erosion problem for deep time. The mountains are being eroded at known rates, which are surprisingly high. Some 27.5 billion tons of rock per year. Now, that's, there's about 383 quadrillion tons of continental crust above sea level. So simply dividing the known erosion rate into the known volume of continental crust, we can calculate that the continents would be eroded flat in a mere 14 million years. Yet, according to mountain experts Ollier and Payne, all the mountains around the world rose up at the same time, some 55 to 80 million years ago. We got a problem here. We have lots of large, sharp, and uneroded mountains all over planet Earth, indicating those mountains are very young. Lowell from Michigan wrote in probably the most common question I get during Q&A, and it pertains to the age of the Earth. Is carbon dating accurate? Thanks for writing in, Lowell. The correct answer is yes and no. There are assumptions that vary carbon-14 dates, and thus they can only be trusted so much. However, in the end, carbon-14 will probably wind up being the creationist's friend. Here's why. Carbon-14 works on once living material. Nitrogen-14 in the upper atmosphere goes through a series of interactions with ultraviolet light from the sun, which turns it into carbon-14, a radioactive form of carbon. This mixes with oxygen to become carbon dioxide, which the plants eat, animals eat the plants, we eat the plants and the animals, so everything that's living takes in this radioactive form of carbon. Until you die. Now obviously when you die, you stop taking in carbon. But because this form of carbon is radioactive, it breaks down radioactively over time. After 100,000 years, all of the carbon-14 will have broken down into nitrogen. 
there will be zero carbon-14. So, obviously, you cannot get a date any higher than 100,000 years using the carbon-14 dating method. In fact, after 50,000 years, it's considered generally to be pretty unreliable. The bottom line is, anything older than 100,000 years old will have zero carbon-14 in it. Now comes the dilemma. Let's start with the dinosaurs, alleged to be 100 million years old. Creationary researchers have discovered that there is loads of carbon-14 in dinosaur bones and in wood fragments found in the rock containing the dinosaurs. Now these samples almost always come back with carbon-14 ages of between 5,000 and 50,000 years old. So, which age is correct? 5,000 years old, 50,000 years old, or 100 million years old? In fact, if we take a sample of any biomatter from anywhere in the geologic column, it almost always comes back with lots of carbon-14, usually giving a C14 age of between 5,000 and 50,000 years old. Samples with carbon-14 have been taken from coal seams, supposedly 300 million years old, natural gas wells, alleged to be 300 million years old, crude oil wells, supposedly 300 million years old, carbon dioxide wells, supposed to be 500 million years old, Mammoth bones, wood fragments scattered throughout the geologic column, and even diamonds, which are supposed to be 1 to 3 billion years old, they all contain lots of carbon-14. The implications are obvious. We find young carbon-14 sample in samples throughout the geologic column, which are supposed to be many hundreds of millions of years old. This shows that the hundreds of millions of years is actually science fiction. The Earth and the geologic column are young on the order of thousands of years.